there and welcome again to the Explaining History podcast. Um, I like to come back to the year 1968 a lot and the, the reason I like to do that is particularly um, if you look at the, the consequences of the Prague Spring, the uh, crushing of the Czech democracy movement, um, the consequences of that for the Soviet Union and for the rest of Eastern Europe in the long term are, are profound. Um, the idea that Soviet communism has anything left to offer that could be progressive, not that it ever really did, but the European left, um, the European kind of uh, uh, Stalinist left that crumbles in 1956 um, following uh, the crushing of the Budapest uprising, uh, finally kind of gives up the ghost in 68 and, and really it's, it's the end of um, kind of Stalinism in, uh, in Western Europe. In, in Eastern Europe um, the results of 68 are quite profound um, and what I want to talk today about is the reverberations of 1968 um, in Yugoslavia, Yugoslavia was never part of the Warsaw Pact, it was never part of the Soviet bloc. Um, Tito would have been assassinated by Stalin had it not been for Stalin's uh, death in 1953. There, was, there were plots there to, to get rid of him. Um, Stalin hated Tito and viewed Yugoslavia as this kind of deviationist uh, state that was um, a, a threat to Soviet communism, a threat to the authority of Soviet communism and was far more likely to kind of uh, veer back towards a, a, an alliance with Western capitalist powers. None of which is particularly particularly true. Um, Yugoslavia was far more an, an example of uh, kind of um, the this sort of independent movement within um, this sort of w w within um, post-war uh, politics. Um, but we're going to look today at um, what happens um, after 68. Anyway, we're looking at an excellent book by R.J. Crampton, Eastern Europe in the 20th Century. I, I do recommend it if it's still in print. Crampton writes, The wave of demonstrations and street action which had characterised 1968 in both socialist and non-socialist societies did not leave Yugoslavia untouched. The social impact of the reform caused some disquiet. Students taking to the streets of Belgrade in, uh, 19, in May 1968 to de demand more rather than less socialism. Tito, always by inclination a Leninist, intervened, showing considerable sympathy with many of the students' demands. In November 1968 there were further student protests, this time in Pristina, the, the chief city of Kosovo, and this time with nationalist rather than socialist demands. The University of Pristina was at this point still a satellite for the University of Belgrade, with teaching almost solely Serbo-Croat. The protesters demanded and were granted an independent Albanian language university. Um, as inclusion in Hotch's uh, Albania uh, was far from an attractive prospect, there was still no cause for succession from Yugoslavia but there were demands for a separate Republic of Kosovo within the Federation. So automatically, even before we go any further, um, the, um, the unrest, the um, tensions unleashed by Soviet intervention in Czechoslovakia affect this, this multi-ethnic federation of um, uh, nationalities that, uh, as a result of the Paris Peace Conference, had come under the uh, umbrella of the Kingdom of Yugoslavia and then the sort of the post-war Socialist Republic of Yugoslavia, um, which was predominantly a, a Serbian-led affair. Um, the you you get not only uh, radical students wanting a more comprehensive uh, socialist society in which to live, but you also get waves of nationalism, uh, and in in some ways, the um, the prev prevalence of the the in, the almost kind of um, impossibility of so socialist states to stamp out nationalist ideas and nationalist sentiment, um, which is something that Benedict Anderson in Imagined Communities talks an awful lot about and 
he makes the point in the first chapter that um, when you get um, in the case of China and Vietnam in the late 1970s and early 1980s, China and Vietnam going to war against one another, he says, well, this idea of socialist internationalism trumping nationalist tendencies, he says, well, it's, it's, it's a nonsense, really. Nationalism is much, much more powerful as a motivator for human beings. But you, you get this occurring um, in this really kind of fissile um, uh, country, um, which, as we see in the 1990s, when it breaks up with terrible, tragic consequences, um, these um, nationalist tensions are, are, are unleashed. So, um, the, you, the independent um, republic within the federation for Kosovo doesn't happen. Um, however, the uh, Kosovo was um, allowed to become a socialist autonomous province, whatever that means really, of Serbia in 1968. And Kosovans were allowed to fly the, bla uh, the, the, the Black Eagle um, red flag of Albania. Obviously, Kosovars are mainly from, uh, um, uh, have their kind of ethnic origins within Albania, though obviously that's a kind, that in itself is sort of a, an oversimplification. Kosovo was uh, given much higher priority for investments. These concessions brought, um, uh, brought time, but no long-term solution. There were neither enough textbooks nor trained Albanian speakers for the new university, which therefore imported teaching materials from Albania. These included the writings of Enver Hoxha, who was the dictator of Albania, which insisted that at the end of the war, Tito had said to Kosovo, that Kosovo should be included in Albania. The new University of Pristina also produced far more graduates than could be absorbed in Kosovo, and no other republic would employ Albanian speakers. The unemployed, uh, the, the unemployed intelligentsia, uh, so vital an element in the composition of extreme nationalist movements during the interwar years, had been recreated. So uh, again, there, there are some really interesting um, uh, nationalist and uh, ethnic divides that are not just hidden beneath the surface in uh, communist uh, Yugoslavia, but there for all to see. Um, the, that were, and when you get the breakup of Yugoslavia into uh, separate nationalist enclaves, it makes an awful lot more sense that the that um, these uh, tensions were um, not just not hidden, but in the open throughout much of the life of um, the, uh, you, the, the 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 communist state in in Yugoslavia. Um, Crampton writes. In the late 1960s and early 1970s, however, it was not Kosovo, but Croatia, that nationalism seemed to pose the greatest threat to the Yugoslav state. The reform um, had made banks rather, um, uh, rather than the federal state the main source of investment funding, but the banks had not been decentralised, with, with the result that, Croats, uh, that to Croats the reform seemed to have increased rather than diminished Belgrade's uh, control over the economy. This problem was ex exacerbated by the fact that the proportion of foreign currency earnings had to be transferred to the Federal Bank in Belgrade, and that Croats, with their flourishing Dalmatian um, tourist industry, resented this drain on their funds. Croatian economists, <coughs> excuse me, Croatian economists argued that the Republic lost 45% of its revenue to central coffers. Whilst economists made these calculations, Historians fueled old-fashioned cultural nationalism with monographs on Serbian domination of Yugoslavia in the years before 1939, or, in, or even in 1944. Um, such nationalism received a powerful um, boost from Matika Hrvatska. The long-established organisation um, was, by the 1960s, receiving support and money from newly founded branches amongst Croats working in the West particularly in the Federal Republic of Germany, Sweden and Australia. OK, so let's break that down. So the, um, the end of the Second World War, um, where uh, Croatia had been allied with uh, Germany 
and uh, Serbia allied with the uh, the West, uh, Western Allies and um, the Soviet Union had um, seen the, the defeat of Croatia um, and the uh, destruction of its kind of the infrastructure of, it, of, it, of its fascist rule and the incorporation of Croatia back into a Yugoslavia that the Germans had broken up during the Second World War um, and the, the Croats and Serbs had both committed hideous crimes against one another but for the most part it had been the Serbs that had been on the receiving end of uh, Croat crimes. The being able, I mean the, the fact that any sort of state was um, be, it was it was um, formed together as a result of um, uh, as a result of, you know following the, these wartime atrocities is is really quite remarkable. Um, my my general sense is that a uh, the the fear of the Soviet Union um, the fear um, the the threat of the Soviet Union really brought together. Um, the, all sides under um, the the leadership of of, of Tito, who was uh, a Leninist figure, but certainly uh, a, a Yugoslav nationalist uh, uh, as well. However, once again, the the resentments that fueled uh, Croat nationalism, some well founded, um, are are there for all to see, and these flows of um, Croat wealth to the central bank in Belgrade notionally to um, uh, consolidate wealth in the hands of a um, uh, of the the state and which distributes it on on behalf of everybody that this doesn't wash with most Croats who say well no this is this is our uh, income that we've created because it's our beaches on the Dalmatian coastline and uh, our industries and our resources that are particularly attractive and you know if, if one has ever uh, holidayed in on the Dalmatian coast I think it's very very beautiful um, but also the fact that um, the that the Yugoslavia was you know a, I would call a semi-porous communist state there, there was tourism into it uh, people crossed from everywhere from Italy into Yugoslavia uh, all, all the time and um, it was uh, also a place where Soviet uh, Soviet holiday makers were able to go with, uh, as well, so it's um, a kind of a an interesting crossover within uh, the the context of the of the Cold War. But um, Croats quickly began to assert their sense of separateness, their sense that uh, this is our uh, our state and our resources, and we don't receive from the um you know whether we've received from this the the yugoslav state or not uh, anything in return is, is neither here nor there um and so it's, it's understandable that it was uh, you know croat nationalism that really begins the splintering of yugoslavia um under franco franco uh, tujman which we'll, we'll maybe talk about uh, another time nationalism soon began to affect the croatian party um, with the appearance of new, the, the new dominant trio of Mika Trapalo, Savka, um, Dabcevic uh, Kusha, and Pera Pekera, um, Pera Pekar, uh, who, if not necessarily liberals, were definitely decentralizers. So, s Croat nationalism sees political figures emerge. Who again? It says, whilst not liberals, were decentralizers. Their job is to decentralize bureaucratic state power at the Belgrade level. For this reason, they took no action against Zagreb, against the Zagreb student demonstrators of November 1971, who carried slogans such as um, "End the retention quotas," "Stop the plunder of Croatia," and "A separate seat for Croatia at the UN." They tacitly encourage this. Um, they give it their their blessing because this is in in line with a, a, an overall sense of um, uh, what they would like to achieve. I mean, the perhaps the what they were looking for at that point, and nothing becomes possible till the end of the Cold War anyway. Um, had Yugoslavia generally begun to crumble, you might have had uh, intervention 
from the Soviet Union it, it itself. They might have been, you know, opportuni opportunistically intervened, or said, you know, we need to do this in order to prevent, uh, the, the, you know, the, the remnants of Yugoslavia be from becoming Western satellites. Um, you might have found um, a Soviet-backed Serbia um, and an, uh, and a Western-backed Croatia, something like that. So I can I can could have seen that in, 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 as being entirely possible. So there was no opportunity, no chance, no prospect of uh, the breakup of Yugoslavia before the breakup of the Soviet Union anyway. But perhaps Croat decentralizers were looking for a looser federation, uh, um, a, um, a a much more um, uh, dominion dominion like status for Croatia within a, a Yugoslav federation. Um, there were um, no uh, moves towards that kind of breakup. Signs of incipient separatism, plus the fact that, that nationalists inside the Croat Party were allowing non-communist nationalists to take prominent positions in social organisations and thereby threatening the leading role of the party forced Tito into action. He called the Croat party leaders, by party obviously we're talking about the Communist Party, he called the Croat party uh, leaders to a crisis conference on his island of Brioni and when they appeared reluctant to impose discipline he announced on the radio that the Croat leaders had lost control. Ten days later, on the 12th of December 1971, he used the threat of force to persuade the Croatian Central Committee to remove the three leaders. This was followed by the arrest of some 400 Croat nationalists and by Tito's resumption of control over the secret police. The Croatian Spring of 1971 was over. The Yugoslav emergency in 1971, the most serious since 1948, had ended all pretense of socialism making possible an evolution away from nationalism. It also discredited those reformers who had argued so strenuously that economic reform was essential to head off a recrudescence of old-fashioned nationalism. So the, there were socialist reform, uh, uh, socialist um, uh, economists and ministers who said, you know, un unless we have a um, either a socialism um, that 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 works, um, or some sort of shift towards um, a, a more mixed economy. We're never going to advocate uh, the, the kind of Western style capitalism. I don't think, unless we have that, we we will get nationalism we'll, or or a variant of fascism. But it seems that. Um, economic reform would probably have done very little to deal with the effect of, of, of nationalism. Their, their idea as kind of materialists in a sort of a strict Marxist way of looking at things is once people's economic questions are answered they don't tend to have any further questions about self and identity because they will identify as socialist citizens in this econo socialist economy that you know provides for them. But people aren't like that you know we uh, human beings have that distinct tribalism within them um but the you know the, the marxist answer to that is well this is the kind of, you know, kind of false consciousness that capitalism brings about uh, apparently not it had also shown that centralism remained strong uh in the party even if it had weakened in the federal state as the purges spread out from the Croatian to other Yugoslav parties, the Liberals, as well as the local nationalists, found themselves the victims. The anti-liberal purges strengthened nationalism. The, uh, a solid member, a solid party member might easily accept the need for the dis dismissal of avowed nationalists, but the punishment of someone whose only mistake was to argue for economic decentralization was less easily explained. To many, and especially to Serbian, Serbian communists, this looked like federal interference in their own party's affairs. And what was worse, uh, an interference which was precipitated by the misbehaviour of the Croats. Of course, Yugoslavia uh, is a federal state, um, and whilst it's a federal one-party state, still local parties in uh, Slovenia, in Yugoslavia, in uh, Serbia, uh, and in other parts, uh, and Bosnia-Herzegovina and, uh, and, and other places, 
would have reject, reacted very angrily about the centralised federal state intervening, uh, particularly if it's because of Croat nationalism. The response was to be more vigilant against any sign of such interference from the centre, and in turn this made local nationalism in the party and outside it more acceptable. And this, you know, the, the fact that uh, Croat nationalists had been arrested and the Croat Spring had been crushed um, doesn't mean to say that uh, nationalist traditions throughout the rest of Yugoslavia go away. Far from it. They are, you know, once the heat's died down and once the um, the focus is off slightly, uh, the, um, uh, the the issue parties carried on. Um, uh, and uh, nationalist organisations continued, uh, nationalist traditions were, were, were observed, um, and nationalist um, uh, folk songs and um, events and social clubs and all that kind of thing, the kind of the infrastructure of nationalism uh, across Yugoslavia, competing nationalisms um, uh, from the, the, the different states in Yugoslavia uh, and, uh, or nations in Yugoslavia uh, are allowed to quite easily uh, con continue. So the value of this, <coughs> sorry about today, um, the value of this, keep coughing, uh, of understanding this, of looking at 1971, 1968 to 71, is that it helps to explain what happens basically 20 years later. I have to give a bigger context to where this explosion of violent nationalism comes at least 20 years later. and. The, the the gradual decline of uh, East, Eastern Europe's communist countries um, had given um, Yugoslavia's communist parties um, a, a sort of like a like a, a heads up, if you will. They had uh, it, th there was advance warning over the following twenty years um, of the kinds of nationalist struggles that would need to continue if you could, you know, and people were thinking very clearly about the breakup of Yugoslavia as a possibility. Um, it's a very, very, brief, very young state in their eyes. I mean, if we are here in the United Kingdom thinking very, very clearly about the breakup of the United Kingdom after 300 years, the possibilities of the breakup of Yugoslavia after 40 years uh, is uh, entirely possible, entirely more realistic. Um, and over that period, throughout the, the 1980s, uh, throughout the 1980s mainly, as it, it, it gradually emerged that um, Soviet communism and Marxist-Leninism in general um, was, was essentially uh, over uh, and, and close to collapse, uh, nationalist alternatives are sought out uh, and those alternatives weren't just um, thought up within the space of a few months. They had been being prepared and they'd had long-term uh, activists working towards them for at least 25 years, if not longer. Anyway, I hope you found that useful and I'll catch you on the next Explaining History podcast. Thanks, all the best. Bye-bye.